Welcome to the 31st Inside Awards. Uh, this entrance briefing has been prepared for you by the Inside Judging Subcommittee. Um, and it contains the following. We're going to run through a bit of information around the Inside Awards, who can enter, um, go through the categories, and then provide you with some tips for entering and if, uh, contact details if you need any further information. So the Inside Awards, this year is the 31st Inside Awards, um, and our focus is to promote the WA ICT industry and profession by recognising and promoting excellence in a sustainable way. Western Australia does really well in the national and the international stage, um, and we're looking forward to the 31st Inside Awards being another spectacular year. So we've, we run the awards program uh, in two streams. So we start off with the product services and product categories, um, including startups and students as included in this presentation. And then a bit later in the year, we will actually open the honorary awards, um, which is the honorary awards include the Dr. Mel Bryce WA Tech Company of the Year, the PSC Entrepreneur of the Year and the Achiever of the Year Awards. We will provide you more information about the honorary awards later in the year. With the current uh, stream that we're dealing with, there are two phases. The first phase is an online entry and then judging process, whereby we, we go and we select the first phase finalist. Those finalists will then go through to a second round of judging where it will be done on the basis of a virtual presentation um, and then uh, we will have a ceremony uh, where we will award, um, uh, celebrate and recognize and tell you who the winners and the Merit Award winners will be. As always, we are very fortunate to have uh, the pathways available for our Inside Awards uh, entrance, being the National Eye Awards, the Digital Disruptors Awards, and the Epicta Awards. Inside Awards' big focus is to actually showcase the innovation and the excellence that lives in WA. Uh, we have amazing uh, testimonials around how well the Inside Awards work for WA innovators, uh, students, projects, products. Um, and so our website has got quite a few of it, but it's, it's really... Um, the recognition, and if we look at Claire Orange there, who says entering the Inside Awards gives all founders, including in my case, female founders, an opportunity to shine and showcase your innovation in pursuit of excellence. Um, and so this is really what the Inside Awards is about. Um, as always, there is a timeline. And so the entries are opening on Monday, the 14th of Feb, and we'll be running, you'll have time until Thursday, the 14th of April. The honorary awards, just for note, will open up on the 26th April and the entry process will be open for just under a month. But as just as the word is caution, do not wait until the, you know, Monday or Tuesday, the 12th or the 13th of April to finish your um, entry. You probably want to start looking at it and get it in done in time. Uh, then there is a process where we are having a, uh, a panel, well, quite a few panels of judges that are doing the phase one judging. Um, and that will go until about 12th of May. We finalize the, um, the phase one and as the finalists. And we will let you know um, at this stage, the plan is around the week of the 16th to the 20th of May. Then if you could in your um, diaries pencil in, um, we, We'll be running the an online process again, but we you'll be required if you become a finalist, then to present your innovation um, and your your project um, during uh, the time of 30th May to 15 June. Just be mindful, as always, there is quite a lot of logistics that go with it, um, and it's not always that easy to shuffle things around. So it's best 
not to book any leave or not to book any big uh, projects or um, but really to actually try and keep some space open. Um, and more information on the actual awards, the ceremony, whether we do a dinner or a cocktail function, uh, will follow during the course of the next weeks. So if you watch the space and if you sign up for our newsletters, uh, you'll be kept up to date with all of the information, as well as reminders in terms of when um, the entries close um, and um, the contact details for the next phases. So the date to put firstly into your diary is the 14th of April 2022 um, and at midnight that night the entries will close. If you have an issue come back to us very early um, because we need to know, because we want as many people to enter, um, but we also would like to understand, um, you know, we can't uh, postpone that date really. So, because there's a whole schedule that runs um, on the back of this. So if you can please put the date, the 14th of April, 2022 um, in your calendars so that you know um, that that is the final date for uh, entries to be submitted. So who can enter? Uh, anyone can enter effectively in these categories. Um, you can be a company, you can be a startup, government agencies, local governments, state agencies, not-for-profits, uh, industry, uh, students, um, both students, um, undergraduates, uh, postgraduates, TAFE students. Um, you can also have work on the basis of joint submissions or teams uh, or a sole um, uh, in, entries itself. It's always good just to have a reflection back on what happened. Um, and if you look at the uh, link in the presentation, we have actually quite, quite a, uh, a bit of information on the past winners. Um, but you can see that it's a real interesting and diverse pool of people that were um, selected as the winners uh, last year. Uh, same with the Merit Award winners. And what you will see is you will see that uh, you can actually enter in more than one category and you can do well in more than one category as well. Um, so the awards categories, and I will run you through them, each of them very, very briefly. A lot more information is on our website. Um, our contact information is the end of, at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, you're not sure which category to enter into, feel free to reach out. My personal advice is always try more than one category, um, especially for instance, or for example, people often go into a startup category and that's really, quite a category where there are very many entries. We have a cutoff, so not everybody can come become a finalist. Um, and so if you, if you allow yourself to enter in at least say two categories, it does actually um, give you firstly um, an opportunity to pitch to two different sets of panels of judges, um, but it broadens your exposure and your um, chances of doing well. Um, so again, this year under, and as we said, uh, th this is not with respect to the honorary um, categories. Um, so for the products um, and project and student categories and startup categories, we again have the Peter Fillory Undergraduate Student Project. Uh, we've got research and innovation. Um, and so just note with research and innovation that postgraduate students enter into the research and innovation category uh, together with uh, industry, but we tend to have two panels whereby we um, review the entries from the postgraduate students uh, separate to that from industry. Um, we find that that is quite, it's worked well and we will continue most likely depending on the number of entries. That is how we would uh, treat it this year. We also have the startup category, social impact, transformative solutions, and innovating uh, government. You can enter into more than one category. And for um, many companies or organizations, that actually work really well. The maximum number of entries per entrant is three. Um, and that excludes the honorary awards, because with the honorary awards, we run it slightly separate to this phase. So with the Peter Fillory Undergraduate Student Project, we do work on, on look for, looking to find the most outstanding 
um, ICT project by a WA based tertiary undergrade student or group of students in a higher learning institution. Um, so these are not just limited to universities, but if you are in a college or a TAFE, uh, for instance, in the last year's uh, awards, the TAFEs did really, really well. Um, the postgraduate students um, enter into the research and innovation uh, category. And what we're looking at here is we look at what benefits are realized, the innovation and the quality of uh, the solution. Research and innovation deals with those uh, research and innovation projects uh, that are in the first stages of development. Um, and it can be individuals, companies, community, industry, academia. It, it must be novel and new to market. So this is where it goes in. It's like um, not, you know, just it, it needs to be new to market. Um, and it covers both the entries of postgraduate and industry organizations or a collaboration between both. Um, and um, we look again in this category at the benefits that you realize, what is the innovation um, and what is the quality of the solution. So with the startup, um, it is recognizing companies that are in the startup phase of development. So to be um, acknowledged or to be able to uh, um, participate in this, in, in this category, you need to have been registered as a company uh, on or after the 1st January 2019. We do not look at subsidiaries um, and the founders must still play a key role. Um, so it's a really uh, good one um, for startups, but the key cut of date and we will do the um, research will be um, in, in terms of the ASIC search to make sure that you do apply and can apply. So if you were registered on um, on or before the 31st of December 2018. Unfortunately, you will have to look at one of the other categories. Um, and the key resources here that will key criteria that we look at is we look at your key resources. So what makes up your team? What makes up your advisors? The impact that you're having, your business model. So how are you currently uh, uh, doing? But what is also your future plan? What is the finance strategy behind it? And where is the innovation? What makes you stand out from any other startup um, in the same uh, space? Uh, with respect to the social impact category, um, there we are looking at um, a digital uh, technology solution that kind of works, brings a social impact and benefit. Um, it removes pressing social challenges or injustices, um, and it has a social impact. So the criteria that uh, we deal with is we look at the why, what is the problem? What is the solution? And then how does this problem and the solution work together? And really make sure, because this is all of the categories are well sought after, is that what is the innovation? What makes a difference? And why is it excellent? Um, and that applies to each of the categories where you want to enter. Transformative solutions, Think about how do you transform processes, culture, customer experience, business solutions, and how is this, you know, problem that you bring, that you solve, um, how is it actually uh, transforming? Um, and so what is the problem that you are transforming? And again, when you look at um, the problem statement for any of these categories is look at um, being quite factual about the problem. Uh, because a lot of times people talk quite generically about the problem. You know, people have been having this problem instead of saying in the disability sector, for example, uh, one out of five people are experiencing um, issues with accessing um, care, home care, um, because they cannot access um, and I'm just, you know, thinking this up, they cannot access digital um, technology because of issues with hearing, seeing, uh, ability to touch, to take. And then you can talk about what the solution is. So if you come and bring those back, you're going to say, well, if it's one in five people, we know we're not going to solve the problem for one in five people, but we are going to go and say one in 10 people, this will be a solution for you. 
um, then come and say how the, the, the problem and solution work together. So how does the problem and solution match? And what is innovative and excellent um, about this? As always, it is really important to look at the innovation and the excellence and what makes you stand out. So what makes you be so transformative? And often, just in general, people forget to address the criteria So um, and to address the title of the category. So if you are talking about transformative solutions, for example, why are you transforming? What are you transforming? And why is that transformation better than the next entry that you're competing with? Innovating government. So innovating government is about making governments more digitally inclusive, uh, innovative, improving access, improving social in, um, inclusion. We do in this category, it needs to have a government agency um, be one of the the entrance. So you could do, if you are a non-government agency, you need to be able to show that there is a formal collaboration with government. And a formal collaboration is not about helping government, but it is already starting to do pilot projects with government itself. Again, when we talk here about government agencies, um, it can be local um, governments, it can be regional uh, lo you know, um, agencies. Um, again, uh, the criteria includes the problem, the solution, how you match the problem and the solution, and why is this innovative and, and what is the excellence um, in the way how you are innovating um, your agency or government in general. Um, so around the categories, there are more information at the insideawards.org.au uh, forward slash categories. Um, you can also look at the past winners to get a, a feel and, and we've only put the link here for the 30th Insight Awards, but we've got the winners listed over the last 30 years. So um, it will give you an indication as to what type of entries we've had, um, how well people have done in terms of the national and I awards, the Epicta, the digital disruptors. Um, so demonstrating innovation and excellence is really important. Um, for a lot of people, it is actually uh, uh, when you start completing the forms, it becomes a bit of transactional because you have to answer the criteria. Um, but you really have to keep in mind as to why this is an, in, this is an award that recognizes um, innovation and excellence. Um, and we want to find the entries that will continue to inspire and innovate uh, Western Australia. So the five simple rules uh, for uh, entering is not rocket science, unfortunately. Um, the first one is quite simple, address the criteria. So make sure that when you address the criteria that you answer what's being asked. You fill in as much detail and stay away from generic sales information. It's not a marketing pitch. It's a pitch to um, a panel of peers who know what they talk about. You know, people who've been in the industry, who work in a broad variety, who can assess the information that you're providing. Um, then Secondly, is demonstrate how you stand out from the crowd. It is quite important that you, if you can highlight what makes your entry different, what makes it more innovative, what, what, why is it more excellent? Um, why does it deserve to win? That is what you have to keep in mind. Um, provide clear proof and backup of claims made. So testimonials. So in the actual categories, and, and there is another briefing uh, uh, presentation where we talk about how to enter, you will see that there is a space in the entry process where you can um, attach um, information that can actually back up. So if you've got testimonials, videos, feel free to add those in because it will help um, the judges to judge uh, your entry. Um, I know that if you are rushing to finish your um, entry by, you know, the 13th or the 14th of um, April, it will be quite hard to get someone else to review and give you feedback. But it's one of these areas that I always recommend to people is we say, get someone else to step back and ask you, because if they don't actually understand what you've put in, 
then there's a good chance that it, there's some missing points and that the judges won't um, understand it as well. Keep it in simple. There's always this thing that it said, Einstein says, tell something to, uh, if you can explain what you're doing, like you're explaining it to a six-year-old, then you know that you, you're hitting the mark. Think about that. Keep things simple. Keep it to the point. Uh, try and stay away from sales and marketing uh, information. And then winning starts with the title of your entry. So unfortunately, a lot of it, companies and, and organizations just put their company name down. And even if your company name is also your project name, it doesn't necessarily tell people what it is. So think about what is the title of your entry and how that is that first point that will capture the judges to understand what your entry is about. So if you can do these five simple rules, this will help you because you will also then see where the gaps are in your own information and where you need to um, grow um, and fill in some of the gaps. So if you need any more information, there is lots of information on the website on the insideawards.org.au. Um, and if you have any questions, you're not sure as to which category to enter, um, if, you, if you meet the cutoff for the startup or any information, uh, contact uh, us at chief judge at insideawards.org.au. Um, that is um, monitored by more than one of us. And so we will be able to get to you in a fairly quick um, manner. So um, this is the 34th. First year of our Inside Awards, last year we celebrated a milestone. Um, and this is really setting um, the next phase to come. So I would like to say thank you. We look forward to seeing your entries. Uh, we're always excited because we know that WA Tech will continue to inspire and um, innovate. We wish you all of the best and um, we hope that you will be joining us soon.